right, guys, extra rounds again. Finally got this thing filed down and uh, put on the rifle right here. I'm just, uh, and, and sorry I didn't uh, videotape all that, but it's just a little, little hard with all the banging and uh, filing and stuff. So right now I'm putting in the set screw. Um, before I put in the uh, before I started actually pounding this thing in, I went ahead and put some blue Loctite on the base of it because I'm uh, not the blue Loctite, but when you're um, installing excess X S rings not rings now i don't know why i said rings uh excess sights they include some red loctite to go ahead and uh and uh tighten up what your your set screw and other stuff but they say to go ahead and smear a little bit of it on the actual dovetail and the side itself uh it, th this didn't come with any direction so i was just going off of uh going off of them and so i went ahead and smeared a little bit of blue loctite on the base on the base of the the stripper clip guide the dovetail part and on the base of the actual picatinny rail put it in it smoothly went in about halfway and then i just started uh uh hitting it so i got my stanley this is just like a hard plastic you know non-marring type hammer and then I went ahead and just like I showed you before, I got that plastic punch. It kind of gummed it up a little bit. It didn't look like that before, but hey, you know, it's on there. I got my calipers out to make sure that we're even on both sides because like I said, the actual Picatinny rail mount itself is not like wide enough at, or not wide, as wide as the actual stripper clip guide. So Loctite, Loctite, Loctite. If I can say anything to somebody who is just getting into firearms, uh, or if you are just getting the firearms, lock tight everything. Uh, blue lock tight is ideal, removable. Uh, this is just this brand, but there is other brands of blue lock tight that you could have. Um, don't really red lock tight anything unless it's just like, a, unless the manufacturer says to, kind of like the excess sites, they say to go ahead and uh, red lock tight it down. So when I got the uh, Vortex crossfire here i went ahead and took all these screws out cleaned it all up with a degreaser went ahead and uh, blue lock let lock tight these downs in a star pattern that's the other thing star patterns mo almost all the time you want even pressure all the way around um, i'm going to put some blue lock tight just right down in there well i'm going to back this all the way out kind of and uh put some blue lock tight in there um one of the things is you see those springs down there you see them right there so when you take, if you're going to do this and you're going to, um, loosen this all the way up, watch those springs because those things will, uh, jump out of there or like do it into a tray to where you can actually hold on to it. Me, I'm just going to put my finger on the other side and just hold that, hold pressure on that so I can blue lock tight the screw. See kind of how I'm holding pressure, but I got, got to it right there. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of blue Loctite on that real quick. Sorry, I closed it, so I got to... Oh, well. It's a little bit of blue Loctite. And then when you Loctite these things, you don't have... When you're actually putting it on, you don't have to, like, wrench it on there. I mean, it's good to get a good good seat on there I might need to back that out actually a little bit let me see and we're gonna put it right here on this metal one okay so we're gonna try to well we're gonna try to put it on the middle one might have to put it on the front one yeah man gotta back that out a little more actually there we go Made it to the side. There we go. Okay, and then what you want to do is go ahead and tighten it up 
most of the way, but but leave it to where you can still move it, like that. Oh, like that. Okay, and push it forward. You always want to push your optic forward. See how it's moving just a little bit? You want to push your optic forward, and then go ahead and tighten it up a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and tighten it down some more, like that. Okay, now we got that on there, and like I said, you want to make sure you push it. Let's go ahead and take these off, and that is what we're working with, fellas. We are working with a red dot on there. That's good. Nice and secure. Let me go ahead and hit it just a little tiny bit more. Yep, just like that. And we're on there. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to pick the rifle up. I'm going to turn it on. Let me turn it on to, because uh, again, you only can go in one direction. Let's go up to 11 to really try to see that that dot. I'm going to, sorry for the shakiness. Bring it up. There's my uh, cat. So we're going to back it all the way up. And I'm going to go ahead and take it off and see what we can see. Okay. I'm going to see first what I can see. Oh, yeah. I mean, the red dot's a little, a little, uh, little low right now, but you can definitely, you definitely have a, uh, sorry about that, that it's a little out of focus, but we'll, uh, one third lower one-third type of a co-witness right there, okay? And if you see, it's definitely a lot, uh, oh, there you go. So that's kind of right there is kind of how you'd be, uh, well, really like right there. That's how you'd be aiming it. So the red dot itself is pretty low, but this is not even sighted in. It's just uh, put on there. But as you can see, it's definitely uh, lower, come on focus, lower than, uh, it would be on a scout mount up here or a regular mount. So we'll see how that works. Uh, I mean, it's kind of, to me, it kind of looks weird just sitting out there like that. And you can kind of see, uh, if you look at the strip, strip clip guide, you can see that set screw going down uh, right into that thing. So we'll see how it is. It's kind of freaking me out a little bit because, uh, let me move the camera because it is kind of close to that ejection port. Uh, all right, let's lock it open. So, I, oh, so as you can see right there, that is pretty close to that ejection port. So that does give me some concern, but the guy that I watched, like I said, Wiseman, I think uh, their channel name is, uh, they, they had theirs pretty much in the same spot, and he had an aim point on there. Uh, yeah, I just have a vortex, but he has an aim aim point on there, and it's sitting pretty much in the same spot. So, you know, if he's willing to put an aim point on there and stuff, I think it should be fine with the vortex. But we will see when I actually take this thing out to sighted in and stuff. I don't think I'm going to keep keep the bikini covers on there all the time, but I'm just putting on them on there for right now. So this is uh this is pretty much the end of it. This is kind of like a quick three-part series. Uh, I know the videos are going to be kind of shitty because I'm just kind of throwing myself into it and I haven't made videos in a while, but this is uh, kind of what the whole rifle looks like. Uh, so we got the stainless barrel. Uh, it'd be better if I had a uh, a background just like a I don't know a white background or something but yeah it's camouflage and it has the didn't come with the sling also when when it has the cluster on there the front sling uh, mounts gone too so I actually had to order this from um uh, was it was it a uh, true m14.com or something like that or tree or treeline m14.com I think that's what's called treeline and uh yeah so I had to order that to put that on there and I like this one a little bit better because mo all the M1s that I've seen the uh the actual uh sling the sling mount right here the actual ring is at like stuck in like that direction the the back one's stuck but this one's actually free moving 
So, also, uh, what I want to tell you guys real quick, this is completely off topic, and I'm going to move the camera over to, over to my little cabinet real quick, because I want to show you something, and I want to share something with you. So, oh, and I have the, the sticker of the people that I got the front sling, sling mount from. If you ask a company to give you a sticker... This is how you can tell how cheap a company is. If you ask a company to give you a sticker and they don't, then they are super cheap, man. They're going to make you buy a sticker, especially when you spend a lot of money uh, on their actual product. So right down there, got M14. That is from yeah, treeline14.com. That's where I got the, the front uh, sling sling mount uh, and every single one of these is from a gun company so i've asked every single one of these companies for a uh, a sticker and some of them even companies that are like a firearms company they just send me a weird uh, weird sticker not even their sticker like right there the anatomy of pew um i think who was i forgot who that's from but this is a, that's actually from a firearms company but they i don't know they didn't have their their sticker so they they sent me that and uh same with uh blackwater uh one of the companies sent me that but everybody else when i ask them for a sticker they go ahead and send me one and you could tell like even right here this uh uh dip di products that was for my marlin 795 i got a metal trigger guard from them because my plastic one breaks so if you have a, a marlin 795 and you have a plastic trigger guard i would highly want to want you to change it because it breaks after a while if you keep uh because you have to disassemble the whole rifle to clean it or totally clean it you don't have to you can just run a snake but they are pricey i think they're like 70 dollars. so but yeah if a company won't give you a sticker, and this goes up too, I got ones all the way up there. Yeah, I mean the Magpul that that comes with with almost any thing, but yeah, Safari Land th those come with come with their stuff. But some of these I did ask, like Streamlight up there. I got a uh, Pro Mount two. And, and the original one, Aero Precision, their Tacoma company. I've been to Aero Precision. I live in Washington, so I've been to their uh, facility before. They actually live, well, I lived up the street from them in Tacoma for a while. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I just wanted to show you this real quick. This The video has nothing to do with that. But and then we're back over here. You can check out my dirty uh, table. So... Yeah, it looks, uh, looks all good. Let me grab a mag real quick to complete the look. Oh, actually, there's a mag over here. So I got the... Oh, also, these, have, these Springfield Armory mags, man. Uh, right there. Springfield Armory, these 20-round mags. Man, they're expensive. It's like 50 bucks. But... It's kind of hard with the... There we go. So there we go. Kind of, uh, we'll kind of move it and I'll grab it so that I can show it off real quick. Nope, oh, I'll just show it off out here. So as you can see, so it looks nice. And we'll try out the try out the optic and see if it actually works just fine and if uh, brass is hitting it or whatnot. Seems like a solid uh, solid rail though. Seems like a really solid rail. Go ahead and take that out. Yeah, it's hard when it's in the actual thing. You see how it gets stuck there? But man, freaking 50 bucks for these. And uh, even though that I say that, you know, something costs so much that it that you should include stuff or just, you know, have just no, nothing packaging. But it, I mean, th this, this gun was, uh, I got it for... I want to say 15 or 16. Oh, no, no, not 15 or 16. What am I talking about? No, uh, 23 or 24. What am I getting 15, 16 from? No, the, yeah, 23 or 24. I wish it was 15 because these, these things are expensive. And for how much you spend on, like, even just the, M, just like the standard model is like what, I think like 17 or 18, and you know they they send you a 10 round mag I'll grab it real quick they send you a 10 round 
it's a Springfield mag. It's a metal, metal mag, which is good. Uh, here it is. Here it is right here. The 10 round mag. I mean, they send you that, and that, that's all fine and good, but uh, when you're, I mean, this will probably be easier to put up in here. Yeah. But that, I mean, come on, man. The 10 rounds of nothing, and it's kind of hard to do actual changes. This is like something for like bench, bench shooting or something. So, all right, well, I'm not going to just keep on going about it. Yeah, this is uh, the M1A kind of Black Hawk down type of thing. I know this is truly not how, you know, I think it was a Randy, Randy something brochure or something. I'm, I'm, I know that's, this is not how he did it. He actually had a, either an arms mount or he had a, uh, I forgot what the other one was, but he had an arms mount or something like that. And he had like an aim point, uh, aim point 3000 or something, uh, right up here and everything. He had a leather sling and this is not a leather sling. This is a canvas sling. So two, this is a STI two point, uh, canvas sling. This is only like 30 bucks too. But it's a uh, adjustable and quick. But still, this I guess this is my version of uh, the Black Hawk Down rifle. <laughs> my my cheap version of the Black Hawk Down. Sorry about that. I moved you a little too close. Yeah. So I just got the canvas sling and stuff. And um, like I said, if if you guys get the uh, the KZ M14 Picatinny rail mount, man. That you know, fitting it is great. That's a good thing. I had to beat the hell out of that thing to actually get it in there. And then here, I'll show you the butt of it. So there's the butt, and it comes up, and this is to go onto your shoulder with a rapid fire. People talk shit about this too because there's kind of like hangs up like that, and then it gets uh, stuck on shit. If you want to check out a a regular guy's firearms channel, he talks about it. It's kind of like an older video, but uh, he's not wrong. I mean, he does a lot of good shit. It's just that uh. I don't know, some things I'm just like, come on, man. That's just how it is. But uh, he's still a good guy. All right. Well, I'm going to end the video there. I know this is kind of shitty, shitty three videos, but, you know, I'm just trying to get something out there. You guys have a good time, and I'll see you later.